Why should I feel the scourge? Why should the shadows come? Why should my heart be lonely and long for heaven's rest? When Jesus is my portion, a constant friend he his eyes on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. His eyes on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. For his eyes on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. His eyes on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. Whenever I am tempted, whenever clouds arise, and resting on his goodness, I lose my doubts and fears. Though by the part he leadeth, a constant friend is he. His eyes on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. His eyes on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. I sing because I sing, I sing because I'm happy. I sing, I sing because I'm free. For his eyes on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. His eyes on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. I sing, I sing because I'm happy. I sing, I sing because I'm free. God's eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. God's eyes on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. His eyes on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. God's eyes on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. Hi, people. Welcome, welcome, welcome once again to a chapter a day. Welcome, Mam Lidwin Wolani. Thank you for coming. God bless you. Hope you are having a great day so far. I am. I don't know about you. But this is the day that the Lord has made and will definitely rejoice and be glad in it. If you're just stopping by and it's your first time to stumble on this particular face you're seeing right now, I'm called Princess Cleeton, Queen of Hearts and Laughter. <laughs> Oh yeah, I like to laugh a lot. I'm um, when I was younger, I heard this music that says, "I was born to make you happy," and I just said to myself that I was born to make people happy. And when I see smiles on people's faces, I don't remember, I don't recall actually smiling to anybody, and I don't get a smile back. No matter how hard the people are, I've never remembered smiling at someone, and I didn't get a smile back. It's it's rare. I don't think I can remember. Except the person is really going through a tough time. But even at that, I can see some people, they're so stern, they're so serious. And when I smile, they kind of, even if it's just a, a light smile, you see their face twitch to that kind of like, you know? 
it's so beautiful so when i do that i really feel fulfilled when i smile and i see people um smiling back at me it's really fulfilling oh you're so welcome i'm glad to have you i really really do not take it for granted you could be anywhere else you could be doing anything right now but you decided to give this time of your life every single person has 24 hours a portion to them so you're taking part of your 24 hours even if it's just two minutes that's two minutes of your life that you're giving to me i don't take it for granted i don't i don't i don't that you take that part of your life that whole chunk of your life and give it to me by listening to me by watching this video right now i don't take it for granted not at all not at all so thank you i should be thanking you for being here and watching and listening to this message so like i said if you if it's your first time here this is a chapter a day and what do we do in a chapter a day we get to study the word of god we make an audio bible in the process we study the word of god together because we've realized that a lot of people are going out there and twisting and turning the word of god adding and subtracting from it so that they can be able to do the things they want to do and say the things they want to say and confuse people so because we know that that is happening we decided to come with the undiluted word of god rather than badging those people and making a whole live stream for four or five hours and badging someone who was saying something wrong about the word of god why not just use the four or five hours and preach the undiluted word of god those who need the real on the Lutia word of God will just be naturally drawn to it when they hear it, when they see it, when they know it, right? It's the exact same thing that happened between Jesus and the Pharisees and Sadducees. Jesus didn't come and go around badging the Sadducees and Pharisees. No, he just came around and he was fulfilling his purpose. And the people who knew what they needed from him, he had the solution to the people's needs. And so these people, they had been with the Pharisees all their lives, the Sadducees all their lives, but they had not had the kind of solution that Christ was presenting. So Christ didn't need to go start singing a song on the mountaintop. No, he just started fulfilling his purpose. And the people who needed the solution he was presenting were naturally drawn to him. And then now the Pharisees got irritated and started wanting to fight him. So, child of God, you're also, get, you're also going to get people fighting you for leaving your purpose and getting people naturally drawn to you because you're doing what you were born to do there'll be a lot of people who are just not going to like you for that the pharisees and the sadducees just don't like jesus was jesus doing anything bad no he was leaving his purpose fulfilling his purpose he was doing some things that they were supposed to be doing and they were not doing because probably for some weird reason whether maybe they wanted people to pay them before they get those things. Maybe they just didn't want the people to see the lights. You know how Jesus was getting angry at some point and saying his problem with them is not even so much of the fact that they've decided not to want to enter the temple. They don't want to enter the kingdom. His problem now is they're not wanting to enter and they're not letting other people in. So this is like they're standing at the door and actually pushing people away and not letting people to get in. So that's what he's really even mad about. If you've decided not to want to enter the kingdom, it's okay. That's your choice. Jesus already gave us that ability to be able to make a choice as to whether we're going to accept the free gift of Jesus Christ, his son on the cross or not. It's your choice. It's up to you. But now deterring another person from accepting that gift is what Jesus is not going to take. It's a no, no. So yes. Um, the, the, the fact that you have made up your mind that you want to live a kerning life, you want to be twisting the word of God and doing the terrible things you want to do under the guise of your Christian or your child of God and then getting people confused because some people who know the real thing will be saying, but this one says they're a child of God. Why are they doing this kind of thing? Why are they saying this kind of thing? The people know. They know what is true and what is not true. And that's why when you come out now with the sincere and diluted word of God, the people will be naturally drawn to you because they know that, yes, this is real. Okay? So that's why we come on here. We'll read the, the chapter together and then we start discussing about it. So, yeah. That's how a chapter idea was born. But 
basically it was born because i went to god and i told him that i wanted to go viral on social media so i always normally encourage people and that's what i do on all my social media platforms encourage people and like use my stories in a unique way that i can tell it my own little way that i can tell it and some things that have worked for me i tell them some things that i i failed woefully i tell them and so that if if you're doing that thing or you're about to do that thing you don't do it because i did it and it failed you know it didn't work for me that was not a good um strategy or good method to take so um the methods that i used and it worked for me i give it out there i'm like okay so this and this and this this is the method i use this is the strategy i use so that's what i was doing all the time that's what i've been doing always so when i went to god and i was like oh i wanted to go viral on social media your way i don't want to go viral the because there's cheap popularity here you can do anything you can run some kinds of stories you can say some kinds of things some people can lie some people can cheat some people can even um do i mean like they can pull crazy stunts just to go viral so i said no god i want to go viral your way i don't want to taint whatever you're already doing in my life i want to go viral your way and then god tells me oh baby girl are you sure i'm like yeah that's how me and god will always have a conversation are you sure baby girl i'm like yeah and he says, okay, go read a chapter a day. <gasps> Wait a minute. Say that again? Did I hear you right? Like, yeah, you did. You did, darling. You did. Go and read a chapter of the Bible every single day. I'm like, <gasps> God, that's not what I'm bargaining for. Oh, yeah, I'm a Christian. But the Bible is not so popular, people. We all know that. It's the truth. Let's face reality is the Bible is not so popular. So I wasn't expecting God to tell me to go read a chapter of the Bible every single day. Until day I've not gone viral though. Basically, I've not gone viral. And I'm thinking in my head like, but the desire to go viral has actually gone out. It has gone off my head. Um, I'm sure that desire, I really desired something else, but... I thought it was going viral that was going to satisfy the desire but I finally realized that I needed the Word of God I needed um, I needed more of God I needed to know more of God to fill that vacuum that was there and in my head they say God's ways are past finding in my head I was thinking I needed to go viral to satisfy that desire of your making impact you actually touching lives you're changing lives I thought I needed to go viral and I was thinking that God was just gonna give me this banger message like this message that was just going to be like boom everybody will want to listen and then I'll just get like 1 million views or 10 million views you know that kind of thing you know that kind of message that everybody just wants to hear everybody just wants to share everybody wants to you know they think every single person needs to hear about it that's what I wanted but I think that desire I thought that was what was going to heal that desire, but the desire was me knowing God more because when I started doing a chapter idea, I tell you the truth, my life has been transformed and that desire has kind of fizzled out. It's not like if I go viral, I won't be excited. I'll be excited, but the desire that made me want to go viral has been filled up to the best of my knowledge or ability because that thing is no longer there. When I just started, it was really strong. So much so that I was almost giving up the first, should I say the first week or the first two, three weeks that I started a chapter a day? Because it was not only like, I, I used to go live on like YouTube and all those places. I'll have like 5, 10, 15 people on. I started going um, um, live on Facebook and Facebook is kind of easier. You know, the access to Facebook is kind of easier than 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 youtube and i was just getting like one two people like one two people i was like god is this how you, hmm, that's how it go be like this is how we're going to go viral like one two people on the live stream god please i beg you no play the kind joke like i used to worry so much about it for like the first almost three weeks of of when i started it but after it's like the thing just fizzled out i don't even know how it did but it did fizzle out so one thing I want to say is that God's way is a past finding. And the truth is that sometimes we're desiring some things in our heads. We think that the solution to that thing is something else. And meanwhile, the real solution is, is what God is going to give you like when you need it. So I just knew I knew I needed to know God more. I needed to know God better. Like I told you all that 
don't think that because I'm the one doing a chapter a day, I have my life all figured out. It's all perfect. It's all, it's just going like, you know, like I plan and everything. No, trust me. There's sometimes some messages here. God is hitting my head hard and telling me that this is for you. Like I am telling myself consciously inside of me and saying, Princess, this message that God is saying right now, this thing that you're speaking right now is for you. You know, right? It's for you. Some other person might be out there saying it's for them, but I know that that particular message is for me. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, um, that's how a chapter a day was born. And we we'll believe that it's come here to get you to know who you are in Christ, the power you possess, the things you should and should not do while you're in Christ, you know, and so that you can live a beautiful life, the Christ life here on earth, and end up spending eternity with God in heaven. Because we're looking at the glory that is set before us. We're focusing on the glory that is set before us and we're enduring everything that we have to go through here. But of course, the kingdom of God, the prayer says that kingdom come, that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So we have to enjoy heaven on earth. We have to. So God doesn't just want us to manage and struggle through earth and then come and enjoy in heaven. Lie, lie. I did not. I didn't do. God is a rewarder. The greatest rewarder ever. The greatest businessman ever. He rewards us on earth and he will still reward us in heaven. So let nobody deceive you. Please, if God is blessing you here, enjoy the blessings and use it right. Simple. If you're supposed to be an ambassador of Christ, your your economy is supposed to be the economy of heaven. So whatever is happening here on earth, is, you're not supposed to be perturbed. You're not supposed to waver. You're not supposed to bother about it. Oh, woman of God on fire! Welcome, 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 Mam Bella E. Please go to her page, go to her YouTube channel, go to her Facebook page. I think she has an Instagram page as well. Love Christ team and get blessed. Oh God, you need to see how she divides the word of truth. Oh my goodness. Sometimes when I just listen to her, it's like I'm, <laughs> it's like I'm flying without wings, you know. And of course, when you when you listen to those messages. It will be equal to zero if you don't put them to practice. That's that's where some of us Christians, we also lose it. We listen to all kinds of amazing messages. We go all over. We're running from this to that, from pillar to post, and listening to all these great messages. It is good, pitch perfect. But are you putting it to practice when you listen? And as soon as you listen, and you start putting it to practice as soon as you listen, it sticks. Don't say I'll start doing it tomorrow. Don't say after this. By the time you notice, it's already gone. It's, it's out of your head. But as, if you start practicing it as soon as you hear it, it's going to work wonders in your life. Okay, people. Let's go. Let's pray and hand over this session to God. We get on to the birthday party and then we get to the Bible party. People are going to be wondering, Princess, what are you talking about? Well... Welcome, Mams and TJ, free moment. Thank you, thank you, thank you for coming. God bless you. So, um, we normally start by singing. I'm sure you heard that before you got in here to this part. If you're watching a rebroadcast, if you started from the beginning, I'm sure you also heard us singing. So, we sing and then we pray and hand over the session to God, and then we get the birthday party. What's the birthday party all about? We Get to wish happy birthday to the people that are in our birthday book. We give them a shout out if we know them personally. And then we get to pray for everybody who was born on that particular day. I am so, so sorry that we didn't come on here yesterday. But we're going to wish happy birthday to the people who were born yesterday, today. And then wish those who were born today, happy birthday today. And then we'll pray for all of them. So, of course, let's pray and hand over the session to God. And then we get to the birthday party. And after the birthday party is the Bible party. What's the Bible party about? We read the chapter that we're supposed to read for the day. And then we discuss about it. And today, our Bible party is taken from the book of Deuteronomy chapter 17, verse 20. More so, people. Don't forget to share us out. You might be saying, oh, you cannot also come, to, come live and talk about the word of God like I'm doing right now. Or you don't have the time in your hands and everything. Well, indirectly, you're going to be preaching to the audience, to your audience by sharing me out. So don't forget to share us out. 
like as well don't forget to comment as well you can also preach by commenting you can also preach by requesting to come live it's possible on a chapter a day we've had a couple of people come live and they joined us on the program and i was really really blessed i was so so excited i would really love it if you can come live you know you don't like to type like me i don't like to type much i wish there was even um replying on facebook and all these other social media platforms i wish there was an option where you can reply with a voice note oh my god i'm gonna so reply to lots and lots of messages but anyways that's for and all the same so let's pray father we thank you for this day this is a day you may rejoice and be glad in it lord i thank you for your goodness for your faithfulness for provision for guidance for always looking out for us for always taking care of us for always protecting us for always providing oh lord father we thank you for the things you've done the things you're doing and the things you're still to do in our lives we just want to say thank you because we know that the plans you have for us are plans of good and not of evil plans to get us to an expected end we know you're the author and finisher of our faith so we know that you will begin a good job in us must take it to completion so we're not afraid we're not giving up we're not backing out because we know you're going to see us to the end your god who says a thing and brings it to pass your word never goes out and comes back the same it always accomplishes the purpose for which it is sent let your word accomplish the purpose for which is sent in our lives today and always in the mighty name of jesus lord give us the grace and the strength to trust in your word totally and completely so it's going to bring transformation deliverance blessings and all that we desire and all that we need to get through and fulfill purpose in jesus name father increase while i decrease so it's going to be you and you alone that will be seen felt and heard throughout this session of a chapter a day take preeminence put now forevermore in jesus name we pray we've come to dine and sup at your table we know we'll never go back the same take all the glory but now forevermore in jesus name we pray amen 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 and amen so let's take this. I'm not going to call the day of today because I'm going to be reading the birthdays of two days. Okay? So you all should just believe that it's your day. It's your birthday. And we are going to be wishing you a happy birthday. So like I said, your name might be in my birthday book. But if we've not communicated for as much as I, I really know you a little bit or something i cannot say much about you i might just say oh yeah we're connected on facebook and a lot of people that were connected on facebook connected on facebook because i saw what you were posting i saw your comment in the comment section and i really liked it and then i sent you a friend request and we connected and sometimes else is that we met at a maybe an event on whatsapp or in um, Facebook or something and then we connected so there are many of those things and for the most part I know that a whole lot of people when they connect to me they're like oh you're doing a great work I saw your video or I saw your message and I really liked it so I connected to you so that's what happens so basically that's what I would say about people that I've not really had a conversation with or I'm not really relating with but they're in my birthday book I'm a birthday freak like that I kind of take people's birthdays down and make sure that I wish them a happy birthday. I send them a message if I have you on WhatsApp. And then um, at some point sometime last year, I had this in my spirit to actually wish them a happy birthday on here and pray for them. So a lot of people have been really excited about the whole idea. I don't know what I'm going to be doing next year or when it reaches the time that I'd already done it for everybody. I don't know what I was just going to be wishing them happy birthday again and then just talking. Well, the spirit leads us as it leads us. So when we get there, we'll cross it. We've done a whole lot of things on a chapter a day aside from only doing the birthday shout outs, um, reading the Bible, discussing about it. We've done Bible facts. We've done, we've done a couple of things on a chapter a day. So something that is honest is true is good it's in philippians the things we should think upon if that thing is in line with any of those things those values that are put there it connects with any of those it's in line with any of those and it makes you become your best version we're ready to to take it on on a chapter a day that's what a chapter a day is all about so let's go birthday people okay Mam Sonitango, 
No, her family name has actually changed. It's a woman in Lost Country, so she's married. That's my big sister. Okay. Um, we got to connect when uh, I was in secondary school. Yeah, it was in secondary school. We connected when I was in secondary school. We had a great time together. We became family. Family, like totally and completely family. And then I went for this holiday. I remember missing going back to my high school that would have been there. It was God's plan anyways. Because I was for holidays. We went for holidays and it was so beautiful that I forgot thinking about my interview and all those things. But normally they used to do the interview um, nationwide. But that particular year they did it only in the southwest so um, I didn't know I missed it and everything my dad was so mad and I was there and the holiday was so nice that I'm not even sure even if I knew I would have left <laughs> oh Sonia Sonia she took care of me when I was in um, secondary school she was like I think three classes or four ahead of me I think yeah and she took extreme care of me two or three classes out of me i think so i might be getting it all mixed up yeah well she was some classes ahead of me and she took care of me like in a very very special way so 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 special and then she also finally left their school and came to school in Bamender, where i was and then she stayed in the house for some time. I was so excited. I was so happy and all. Oh, like, it's just like we're like, you got new. We didn't just want to separate from each other. I remember this time when I went to the house and she's so pretty. I, I remember this time when I went to the house and I stayed in the house. It's really true that when you stay with people, imagine just staying with her like physically and we kind of start resembling each other. We kind of start feeling like people start feeling like we're really, really sisters. Like, blood sisters like that then imagine what happens when the bible says that the two shall become one flesh it's something like that right because husband and wife when they've been having intercourse together like there's that koinonia and everything of course they start resembling each other because tissues are being spread around kind of i don't know the chemistry or the biology of all that thing but yeah I remember people saying, you resemble your dad. And then some people look at me, you resemble your mom. Anyway, your mom and your dad resemble, kind of. My mom and my dad kind of resemble, you know. So, they were always confused with who I resemble. But I resemble my dad. My late dad very much. I resemble him. Okay, so, um, Sonny's mom, uh, Sonny's auntie came and was like, is this not your younger sister? I was getting me mixed up with one of her younger sisters. Can you imagine that? Sonny was there all the time, always trying to look out for me, you know, getting me the best. Like, she's an amazing big sister, really an amazing big sister. Thank you for being your amazing self, Sonny. And thank you for giving me an awesome nephew and an awesome niece. They're cutie pies, okay? And then the next person is Mr. Clifford Aconte Neba. Okay, I got to know Mr. Clifford Aconte Neba when we were in the university. And he ended up being my in-law. Got married to my bestie ever. And yes, they have like four boys. Yeah. Man. He's a father of kings. And he's really, really amazing. Of course, while we were at the university, then he was not married. But while we were at the university, he was always looking out for us. Mm -hmm. He was always looking out for us. And I'm really, really appreciative. Even when we got out as well. Sometimes when I had some little issues that I wanted to, to, to be looked into and stuff like that. He would go all out to be able to help in every single way that he could. I'm really grateful for that. I don't take it for granted. Thank you so much. Thank you for being an amazing husband to my little nephews. And thank you for being an amazing, thank you for being an amazing husband to my best friend and for being an amazing father to my little nephews i really appreciate you i remembered sometime when i went for holiday to their house they spoiled me to crazy they're almost making me really really lazy and he, he kept going on and on like you have to do this you have to eat this you have to go like oh my god it was it was cool it was cool i loved you there and they're like oh when are you coming next well i don't know when next i'm gonna come <laughs> Aside from the said they've 
cut the line on this thing, I would have been saying I'm coming for the next Omugwa. <laughs> if my bestie hears this, she's going to kill me. <laughs> okay, happy birthday, Mr. Clipper. Continue, bar. And then the next person is Mr. Elvis Bongsi. I got to know Mr. Elvis Bongsi in church. We um, were in the same church together. First, he started listening to my program on the radio. I had this program on the radio, on the Christian Gospel Radio. It was called Something to Sing About. Kind of, it's coincidence. It's a, it's a beautiful coincidence. Our jingle was a song I sang at the beginning. Why should the feel the courage? Why should the shadows come? Why should my heart be lonely? And of course, Something to Sing About was basically you giving your testimony. There are people who are crowd, they, they have crowd fright. They have... Um, a microphone fright they have all these kinds of frights so they can't stand in front of an audience and everything and talk but of course if they know that the audience is just imaginary they can talk so people could give their testimonies on the radio they could it was a calling program on the radio they could call and give their testimonies they could actually you know all those kinds of things it was really cool a lot of people loved it so Elvis was listening to that program and listening to the Christian gospel radio in general. Then he got saved. He started fellowshipping at our church. It was really nice. I mean, he's one, he's a giver to the core. The guy can give for the world. Man, he used to freak me out with giving. Not just me though, but a lot more other people that he was giving to. He gives like crazy. What? Man. I... <clears throat> I used to think I was a giver when I met Elvis. Jesus wept. This guy can give like crazy. He can give like there's no tomorrow. It is well with you. She be as you give. It will come back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together. And one other thing I knew about him is that he's hard working. He can work. The boy can work. Oh my. Elvis can work. Happy birthday to you, sir. I miss you, Sha. It's been long that, you know, we've not seen, we've not chatted. But I know that you're still being that best you that always is. Welcome, Mr. Don Paolo. Thank you for coming. God bless you. And then the next person is Mam So Joy. Mam So Joy, I also got to know her through my radio program. So um, she was listening to the Christian Gospel Radio. And since it was a calling program from time to time, they actually called me. When I went to the market, they started telling me, Oh, you're the girl that talks on the radio, right? I don't know how people used to make out my voice physically and the radio voice because sometimes I used to feel like my voice on the radio is different from me talking to you physically. But people could make it out, though. Yeah. So lots of people, when I was just around the market, they had um, a shop at the market. Um, Joy sells at Pajagwa shop. So when... Um, I go there like I was going around the market and buying stuff and then people started showing me to other people like oh you know Pat Jaguar he also listens to this, this this and I went there and I met a lot of people in the shop who were listening and they were so happy to meet me and, oh. and all these people used to spoil me with lots and lots of goodies I'll go there sometimes and they'll just take a stack of chocolate poop in my hand they'll just take a stack of this and I'm like what see how you see how when you're doing what you love and when you're doing what God wants you to do, you just get provisions and get all those kinds of things. I used to have people who were sending me airtime just like that. I used to have people who were sending me mobile money transfers. I used to get people. They're just sending me all kinds of things. And like to tell you that that job was a voluntary service, a lot of people don't believe till today. My friends knew that I was this crazy rich girl because I was working at the radio but the Christian Gospel Radio was voluntary service and a lot of people were taking advantage of the fact that it's a Christian radio and wanting to get things for free and not wanting to pay money. Some people come and run their adverts and not pay. If you're not there to know what's going on, you just think that these people at the radio are chopping some plenty, plenty money. And my director used to remove, I can't count the number of times my director had to remove money from his pocket to pay bills and stuff like that. Well, all is well. So there are lots of people that have been listening to Christian Gospel Radio on something to sing about that got to know me today. I'm like, wow, what a beautiful coincidence. Lord, thank you. I actually sang that song. I was I had a couple of songs in my head I wanted to sing today, but that one just popped up. It just won the whole deal. Probably it was for these two people. 
Mr. Elvis and Mom Sojoy. Okay, so let's get the next person is Mom Mariam Zazi. Mom Z Mariam Zazi is one of my friends I met in, I think, Dubai. And I was in the choir then, and then we're in the youth group together. She's an amazing lady. She's very calm, very composed. She's very loving and caring, that I know for sure. And I just got a liking for her. You know how there's this person that should just be in your bunch, but in my bunch, who doesn't talk? Oh, yeah. She's in my bunch, but she doesn't talk. So we just clicked, and she was a very nice person. And we kind of used to take pictures together, I think couple of pictures we did take together I don't know if she eventually joined the choir or we're just in the youth group I think we were just in the youth group I was in the choir but I'm not sure she ended up joining the choir she was just in the youth group very calm composed and loving very loving girl happy birthday to you and then we have bad and I I but and I are my friends that I got to meet on YouTube and they're really, really fun people. Like they make you laugh. They have some interesting shows that they put on on their channel and all that. I'm really, really grateful. They, they were always supporting me when I was still struggling and growing. They were always there supporting me, watching my videos, coming and sharing, commenting. I mean, like the encouragement was top notch. Thank you so much, Bad and I I and God bless you all. So let's take that again. Happy birthday, Sonita. Happy birthday, Mam Sonyangum, a.k.a. How could I forget her name again? I used to call her Sonia Kakos. <laughs> because of a, a certain movie that we watched. And then, happy birthday, Mr. Akonte Barista. Akonte Clifford Neighbor. That my friend Palava spirit don't die because I repented. So I'll be looking for trouble. Anybody try me, I'll take them to you. <laughs> Happy birthday, Mr. Elvis Bongsi. Happy birthday, Mam Sojoy. Happy birthday, Mam Miriam Nzazi. Happy birthday, Bad and I are. So these are my friends that are from I think they're Singaporeans. And they're waiting for me to come to Singapore for holiday. Well, when I went there, I didn't know them. But if I have an opportunity to go there again, I wouldn't miss it for the world. The place is beautiful, man. Okay, so let's pray for the birthday people and get on with what we have for today. Okay. Let's get on with what we have for today. Hey, people. We have to pray for the birthday people. Are you ready? Ready or not, here I come. Oh, sorry. I need my... And so I think I'm missing someone. I have to add the person. Okay. Oh, Mom Concilia. Concilia. Oh my God. Okay. Mom Concilia. I actually got to know her in a group that I was added on. And it's it's made up of really amazing people. People who like to grow, people who like to be their best versions, people who like to support one another and all that. That's how that group came to being. Um, 1001 Reasons. That's um, the, 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 the name of the group. They're really smart, very focused, very virtuous people in this group. And Mam Concilia caught my attention like from day one with her smile. Like, I'm a smiling beetle, so... Not smelling me too, smiling me too. <laughs> I'm a smiling girl, so anybody who smiles just cuts my attention, catches my attention. This girl can smile for the world, you know. Like, so I easily connect to people who smile, and her smile actually brightens your day. When I just see her pictures, I'm like, oh my good god, this is beautiful, this is pretty. So I almost left her out. She's amazing. She's always trying to keep the group active and always trying to make people smile, always trying to make people laugh. I really, really do love her about her. I can't wait to meet her physically. I can't wait to meet a lot of people physically. And some people say, well, social media helped. Now, I made this, so come on, let me show you myself. I'm one of those people that social media has helped, like, in crazy ways. If you know the people I've connected to, just in this group, 1001 Reasons, I don't even want to start naming them now, but... There are lots of them. And they say if you connect yourself to amazing people, you'll be the next amazing person. That's exactly my life. 
that thing is a practical reality in my life. It's no joke. Oh yeah, it is. Okay, so let's pray for all these um, amazing people and get on with what we have for today. Deuteronomy chapter 17. Uh, it's Deuteronomy chapter 17 we have today. I hope you all are ready. Let's pray first. Father, we thank you for this day that you've made. We thank you for adding a year to all the lives of your children. Oh, Father, I pray, oh God, that you're going to do a new thing in their lives. Let them be transformation. Let them be healing. Let them be deliverance. Lord, I pray that you open the windows of heaven and rebuke every devourer from their lives, oh God. Father, I pray that today, oh God, they're going to be pay setters, trailblazers, and wall changers as you empower them and impact them with all that is necessary to be all that you want them to be. Lord, I pray that they're going to fulfill purpose. They're not going to miss it. They're not going to back out. They're not going to stray their part. That when they get to that point in life where everybody gets to sometimes, when you feel overwhelmed, you feel like you want to give up or back out, they're not going to do so because they'll hear a clean and loud voice saying, this is the way you walk that we need. So they'll stay on course. They'll not stray. And after all, all glory be given unto your holy name because they will stay focused and fulfill their purpose to the letter till they meet you again. Father, I pray, O oh God, that their gifts are going to make a way for them. It will cause them to stand before kings, not before me, man. And though increasing wisdom and stature, getting favor before God and before man. Lord, I also pray, O oh God, that they are going to keep shining brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. Lord, I pray that you're going to open the door for them that no man can shut and shut every door that is not opened by you and it's not of you in their lives, oh Father. I pray that you're going to divinely connect them to people and things that will cause them to progress and divinely disconnect them from people and things that will cause them to retrogress. Lord, I pray, oh God, that you're going to open their eyes so they can see those that they're supposed to be destined to help us to and they'll strategically position themselves to help when time comes or arrives. And Lord, I pray that you're also going to open the eyes and the ears of their destiny helpers and cause them to strategically position themselves as well so that when these ones cry for help, help is going to be made available for them. East, west, north, and south, front and back, top and under. Lord, that help is going to come through from every angle. Lord, you're the one who lifts one up and brings one down. Leave them up to the top in the mighty name of Jesus. Teach them strategies, techniques, and methods that are available and necessary for them to get to the top and stay permanently at the top. It's not just getting to the top, but it's staying there permanently. And only you... Sorry, people. I'm so, so sorry about that card there. It wasn't intentional. Like I've said, sometimes I just can't help it. When I start praying for people, I start doing any prayers thingy my eyes are closed it's reflex <laughs> but i keep saying that i won't close my eyes i'll try to be watching because it's it's social media social media can fill you internet can fill you and all these things gadgets can fill you so i normally have my phone on multiple screens multiple windows because my bible is open on one and then facebook is on the other one and then some other things but most of the times when i'm doing this my bible is open and then my my facebook page is open so it's multiple windows so sometimes for some weird reason it says my phone is overheated and so the multiple windows have to close i'm so sorry about that so um when it closed it actually closed out on um the live stream instead and let the Bible open. So maybe that's the trick. I should be putting the. It looks like the top window. Shuts the down window. But if I put the Bible down. When I'm reading. It looks like I'm looking down. Instead of up. So I always put the Bible up. So it looks like I'm really looking at you. <laughs> Those are video taking basics. Or whatever it is content creation basics so we're going to read the bible actually from here um but let's do the amen amen let it be so amen in their lives amen let it be so amen 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 in their lives amen let it be so 
as we've prayed in their lives amen let it be so amen 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 in their lives amen as we have prayed let it be in their lives as we've prayed yes signed sealed and dusted seal all the prayers with the blood of jesus knowing that god has heard them expressly clearly and of course he's going to answer all our prayers and give this birthday people all that they desire like we always say it's not just for the people that are called their names out it's for every single person who was born on this particular day so you can give it all 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 give it all to them so today our bible party let's get it started sorry we're going to be looking on one side today not on the top as we always normally do so it is we might end up buying two gadgets in the in the final analysis so we can just place them right and not get anyone disappear and you're looking at me i know some people like to be looking at my pretty face when i'm reading but manage for now it's just 20 verses okay so i know you can manage <laughs> let's go let's get the bible party started get the bible party started ready or not here i come Deuteronomy chapter 17 Thou shalt not sacrifice unto the Lord thy God any bullock or sheep wherein is blemished or any evil evil favoredness Stick that back Deuteronomy chapter 17 Thou shalt not sacrifice unto the Lord thy God any bullock or sheep wherein is blemished or any evil favoredness for that is an abomination unto the Lord thy God. If there be found among you within any of thy gates, which the Lord thy God giveth thee, man or woman, that hath wrought wickedness in the sight of the Lord thy God, in transgressing his covenant, and had gone and served other gods, and worshipped them, either the sun or moon or any of the host of heaven, which I have not commanded, and it be told thee, and thou hast heard of it, and inquired diligently and behold it be true and the thing certain that such abomination is wrath in israel then shall thou bring forth that man or that woman which have committed that wicked thing unto thy gates even that man or that woman and shall stone them with stones till they die at the mouth of two weaknesses or three weaknesses shall he that is worthy of death be put to death but at the mouth of one weakness he shall not be put to death the hands of the witnesses shall be first upon him to put him to death and afterwards the hands of all the people so thou shalt put the evil away from among you if there arise a matter too hard for thee in judgment between blood and blood between plea and plea and between stroke and stroke being matters of controversy within thy gates then thou shalt arise and get thee up into the place which the lord thy god shall choose and thou shalt come unto the priests of the levites unto the priests the levites and unto the george that shall be in those days and inquire and they shall shew thee the sentence of judgment and thou shalt do according to the sentence which they of that place which the Lord shall choose shall shew thee and thou shalt observe to do according to all that they inform thee according to the sentence of the Lord which they shall teach thee and according to the judgment which they shall tell thee thou shalt do thou shalt not decline from the sentence which they shall show thee to the right hand nor to the left hand and the man that will do presumptuously and will not hearken unto the priest that standeth to minister there before the Lord thy God or unto the George, even that man shall die and thou shalt put away the evil from Israel and all the people shall hear and fear and do no more presumptuously. When thou art come unto the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee and shall possess it and shall dwell therein and shall say, I will set a king over me, like as all the nations that are about me. Thou shalt in any wise set him king over thee, whom the Lord thy God shall choose. One from among thy brethren shall thou set king over thee. 
thou mayest not set a stranger over thee, which is not thy brother. But he shall not multiply horses to himself, nor cause the people to return to Egypt, to the end that he shall multiply horses. For as much as the Lord had said unto you, ye shall henceforth, henceforth return no more that way. Neither shall he multiply wives to himself, that his heart turn not away. Neither shall he greatly multiply to himself silver and gold. And it shall be, when he seated upon the throne of his kingdom, that he shall write him a copy of this law in a book, out of that which is before the priests, the Levites. And it shall be with him, and he shall read therein all the days of his life, that he may learn to fear the Lord his God, to keep all the words of his law, and the statutes to do them. This, that his heart, be not lifted up above his brethren, and that he turn not aside from the commandment to the right hand or to the left, to the end that he may prolong his days in his kingdom, he and his children in the midst of Israel. Thank you, people. I have a lot of things I saw here. We're going to start from the beginning. Let's start at the very beginning. A very good place to start. When you start, you begin with verse 1. <laughs> okay, so let's go. Okay, so let's see. Let's talk, let's talk, let's talk. What did you learn? What did you learn? What did you learn? So let's talk. Let's see the comments in the comment section. Let's see you requesting to come live so we can put you on, so you can be a part of this conversation you can tell us what you've learned from the scripture or you can just tell us a message that god has blessed you with and you want us to get blessed by it god might have ministered something to you today while you started your day he might have ministered something to you sometimes i kind of take a shower and it feels comfortable talking to god in the shower weird but it's interesting the other day i was thinking about it and i was like god this our kind of conversation is weird why do i kind of feel comfortable talking to you when i'm in the shower <laughs> water is my news that's the thing you know when i'm by water like the beach the sea you know water in general is my muse it kind of makes me think it kind of makes me have this clear mind you know kind of thing i i guess maybe that's why weird huh so welcome mr elvis kiang oh my god man of god with the word and with power hope you're doing great would love to have you on a chapter a day, you know, to actually divide the word of truth for us like that. Or just give us a word, maybe a word of exaltation. We wouldn't mind. You can request to come live as well. And as well as you can also tell us what you learned from the scripture. If you are here when we're reading though. But if you were not, we just read Deuteronomy chapter 17. And of course, we read a chapter every single day. So tomorrow is going to be Deuteronomy chapter 18. You can make us a promise to come tomorrow. You can still read through it right now. It's not a very long chapter. And then you come and talk to us about it. Or you can just give us a word of exhortation from any part. I know you're, you're a man with a word. And of course. So even if you're woken up from sleep. I know you'll be able to talk to us. So we're glad to have you on the program today. So please come on in any way. Or in any level. Or in any capacity you want to come on today. We're ready to welcome you. You can also do it in the comment section. That would be good. I miss, miss, miss you too. I miss you. Mom, I'm Murad, Punk Swan. I miss you so much. I miss Nak. I miss Ness. I miss Uncle Nut. I miss you all so, so much. When are we going out again? We're almost having holidays, you know. <laughs> okay. First things first, chapter 1 is talking about the kinds of sacrifices we should give to God. We should not come and give sacrifices to God that will blemish all these ugly, dirtling sacrifices. We should not give sacrifices to God. In To put it in perspective, in our days, I would say that we should not give sacrifices to God that are, are not good. I, I give examples. I can't go being a prostitute and then I'm coming to give God tithes. That's like a sacrifice and it's terrible. It's dirty. God doesn't want your tithes. He wants your life. The first and, and best ever sacrifice we can give to God is our lives. 
give our lives as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto God we should give our lives to Christ without blemish which means we should live our lives for Christ we should let Christ live through us so God doesn't want our sacrifices of material things and all those things when we're not obeying his commandments says that obedience is better than sacrifice so there are lots of things that we do we do a lot of these religious activities it's good to do religious activities but it's best when you do those activities and you're truly in christ it's like zero when you do it and you're not in christ i had wasted a whole lot of my life but i'm sure god had a reason why i've wasted a whole chunk of my life doing religious activities and never ever really being part of it so like i studied religion for all of my secondary school and high school and even wrote it at the GC level I got it at the both the, the ordinary and the advanced level I got religious studies so I knew the Bible like well but none of it was a practical reality in my life none none I mean like I could I could so preach the word it's like how they say that the devil knows the word they, even the demons know the word and they tremble I used to know the world like that and I know what is what and what is what but I wasn't trembling like I just studied it to pass my exams and I did so it had no practical reality in my life and for the fact that I knew the word like that more than a lot of people who were children of God I used to use it to send away people when they come to preach to me because I'll use some places and quote it and twist it and bend it and turn it some of them had never even seen it so they were kind of confused like where i got that kind of thing from but i was only using it because i started in school and i was using it to challenge them when i got saved oh my god it was a different ball game entirely and i'm glad that i got saved so when the bible is talking about um sacrifices without blemish it's basically those things you can't go and be silly you can't go and be scamming and then you're coming to give tithes to god you can um, go and be scamming and then you come and you're giving the money using it to do um, philanthropic works and all those things no god is much more concerned about your soul what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul in heaven don't bring gifts and sacrifices to god that are with blemishes god wants you clean and prop then you're offering yourself as a sacrifice you worship him in spirit and in truth don't bring him worship that is just lip service don't bring him thanksgiving and praises that is just lip service let it come from the heart let there be a spirit to spirit communication and connection let them be koinonia okay and then he goes on and he says that if there be found among you if there be found among you within any of thy gates which the Lord thy God giveth thee, man or woman that had wrought wickedness in the sight of the Lord thy God in transgressing his covenant, and had gone and served other gods and worshipped them, either the sun or the moon or anything of the host of heaven, which I have not commanded, and it be told thee, and thou hast heard of it, and inquire diligently, and behold, it is true, and the thing certain that such abomination is worth in israel then shall thou bring forth the man and the woman which have committed that wicked thing unto thy gates and even that man or that woman and shall stone them with stones till they die hmm. in those days when christ had not come things were serious i'm telling you i'm not sure that if i knew all these things in those days i'll probably be serving god out of fear much more than out of love i really thank god that he has made it possible for us to understand love is because we experience the love that he he showed for us the love that he went to the cross and died for our sakes that he loved me that much that he had to die for me to take my place i'm loving god now because he loved me i'm not loving god because i'm scared to go to hell which is also a part yeah you need to be scared to go to hell and then start loving god and then when you truly experience his love in loving him out of that fear when you truly experience his love you automatically start loving him you just start serving him out of love not out of fear there's nothing to be afraid of about god there's everything to love about god every single thing and so these people that like their days the punishments were terrible 
if you're caught like sinning, if you're caught worshiping another God, if you're caught worshiping idols, if you're caught doing something evil, you're stoned to death. And it's true, you're stoned to death. But the part that intrigued me better is how they find out whether it's true or not. That is the most intriguing part. And my dad had been using that and I also started using it for some time and it's really, really helping me. Um, it's a conflict management strategy and uh, I had some videos that I was supposed to put up about conflict management. I've not put them up. I think I'll start from there. I've not posted on my YouTube channel for a very long time. So maybe I'll begin with that and then um, we'll see how it goes. So um, it goes on to say these people are supposed to be stoned to death. But thank God for today. We're not stoned to, get to death. God needs us to realize that when we find out that we're in this state, we did these kinds of things, we've done wickedness, you know, we've gone astray. He still wants us to come back. Like the prodigal son, he wants us to come back. He's waiting with hands open wide. God is always constant. We're the ones that are variable. We're the ones that are always moving. Left, right, front, back, and center. We're not constant. We're just very variable. God wants us to be constant because he's constant. But for some weird reason, we just get not to be constant. Lord, help us. Forgive us. We're this sorry, Sha. <laughs> Give us the grace to be constant. Give us the grace. We need your grace. And so it goes on to say, um, they had to be stoned to death till they die. It's not even like they were shot to death. You know, you just die once. Lie, lie, you. you'll be there. <laughs> and then it says, at the matter of two or three weaknesses, um, the person is worthy to be put to death. But at the matter of one weakness, he shall not be put to death. That's the part that I love. My dad does that and it's so cool. Um, there's another scripture that says somewhere, um, I can't remember if it's in Proverbs or where, but I don't know exactly where it is, but it says that, no, it's in Proverbs. It says the first person to bring a matter is innocent up until the second person comes and talks about the matter. But for the most part, when the person has already brought the first, when the first person has already brought the matter, it is kind of hard to automatically flip from the person's version when you've almost already made a conclusion to actually judging objectively. If you're not really an objective person and you're not someone who is yielded to the spirit of God, you might almost always take the side of the person who came and reported the matter first. But no, this is what my dad does. Hmm. You had better know what you said and repeat it but you know that if it's true you'll be able to repeat the same thing you said right it only gets difficult to repeat what you said before when it's not true i'm not trying to say here don't get me wrong don't don't misquote me don't misunderstand me i'm not saying that if you say something today you're going to say it in the exact same words another time you're going to say the same thing in another you might use different words but it will be the same thing it will be the same idea it will be the same thing that you were talking about so if some if i said someone slapped me and i said nothing i'll be able to say that again some other day i say i got slapped and i was not even saying anything it's the same thing but i've used different words you know i don't know why he slapped me and i didn't even say anything to him i was even confused it's the same thing i said but it's in different words so like that you'll be able to say that so my dad will just be like you say, say, oh, really? Yeah. Oh, really? Okay. He'll leave you. After a couple of days, he will make it to take some time. Oh. He will not do it immediately because if it's immediately you lied, you'll be able to still keep that lie in your head because you know that probably something is going to happen or so. But for the most part, some people were never keeping it because they were not even expecting that he was going to do what he had to do. So he'll give you some days. He will not bother. He'll call the second person. He'll call the person whom... You came and complained about. So, for example, maybe it's me and my bestie. My, I go and report first. You say, oh, really? I say, yeah. You leave it for like two, three days. You call my bestie and say, what happened? My bestie will also explain her version. Boom, 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 boom. You leave it again for another like three days. So my bestie will also have forgotten whatever she said, if she lied and all that. After like a week or so, he'll just call two of us. Okay. Oh, yeah. What did you say to me? Call the first person. What did you say to me? Call me. I'll say my own. Call my best to say my own. See? The problem is already from both of you. Both of you did not say the truth. This is not what you told me the other time. If it's not true, he'll tell you like that. If it's true, you'll be like, okay, so can we solve the problem now? He goes ahead. 
like everybody say your grievances say how you want us to solve the matter it's it's about two of you so you cannot be taking one person do you know what happened lesser and lesser people started going to report their problems to him because they knew that he wasn't going to take sides they knew that they could not lie because the truth is sometimes as human beings we have the tendency of always explaining our own side of the story and making ourselves innocent and removing the part we played to make that problem happen most times most times we vindicate ourselves most times we exclude ourselves from the problem we put ourselves totally like the victim but sometimes even the victim has a hand in why the problem is there in the first place there is something little if you're true to yourself if you're honest with yourself there is something little that you did that made that problem get triggered something little it might not be so big but it might be little but it's there this is in no way saying that there are no times where you're totally and flawlessly guilt and um, not guilty no that's not what i'm saying but there are times that when you look at some situations when you look at some particular problems you know that you had a hand in it you had a hand in it okay so let's get past that so my dad doesn't solve problems with just one person and that's why they were saying here that if it's not more than two or three weaknesses no you're not going to be stoned to death because there is that possibility of one person coming to maybe um, um i had a beef with you and then this person now is saying that oh you did this i just bear false witness oh there are lots of people i think this the passages before the chapters before they say nobody should bear false witness against another person so i decide to accept and just say that yes you're the one where the problem meanwhile you are not just because i have a vendetta against you and i want you to be dealt with so i think like this is my opportunity and then sometimes people do those things and say ah, i'm gonna ask god for forgiveness now i'll lie and then they'll deal with the person and then i'm gonna ask god for forgiveness you go restitute oh and you know restitution is not an easy thing so no better put yourself in that kind of situation <laughs> in the first place it's for your own good okay let's go the next one says that um the hands of the weaknesses shall be first upon him to put him to death and afterward the hands of all the people so thou shalt put the evil away from among you and yes the evil reduced i already told you guys that it reduced in my church because a lot of people prefer to solve their issues by themselves than taking it to my pastor because they know that my pastor was going to be strict about it and everything so if my pastor is going to resolve the issue this way why not just reduce it resolve it amongst ourselves and then a lot of issues also stopped happening because people had already realized some people used to have those issues basically because they thought that maybe they've been in the church for years maybe they've said the church in this way or that way so my pastor was going to for um like stand on them like stand for them or something he wouldn't stand for you if you're wrong if you're right he would stand for you all the way but he's not going to take your side because you've been in the church for longer you're in the department the workers department that's how some people do it if you're in the workers department your problem comes to church and it's just with a member it won't even be trash they will just consider you the problem they will not even look into it they will not even try to see what happened and what went wrong and all that in some churches that's how it is you cannot go and report about the member you cannot even in some offices you cannot report about the boss the boss did something to you you cannot talk about it you know well even where i am some things you cannot go and report because a type person is always right regardless okay and it says that if there arise a matter too hard for these in judgment between blood and blower between plea and plea between stroke and stroke being matters of controversy within that thy gate then thou shalt arise and get thee up into the place where which the lord thy god shall choose there's some matters that are hard take it to god it's god who can solve those matters some matters are hard even for human beings to solve even for human beings to understand i get to that state sometimes i'm talking to someone and i'm like from the way they're responding and the way they're talking you know very well that they've not even gotten a thing or they've not even understand a thing as to what you're complaining about or what you're talking about just go to god quietly <laughs> it says and thou shalt come unto the priests the levites and unto the george 
that shall be in those days and inquire and they shall show thee the sentence of the judgment so when you go to god or you go to the leaders this time around they're going to the priest because they had access but to the priests they didn't have like direct access to god it's the levites who were supposed to stand in and sit in for them all the time but now we have access to god we have direct access to god so you ask god what's the sentence of this judgment what should i do how should i relate to this person how should i do with this person how should i handle this matter you know we just think like we feel like there are some things in our lives that we can handle by ourselves and there are some things that god this domain song be magnified is one of my best songs why because that's how my life was basically i felt like there are some things that god could do and there's some things that he couldn't do so i had to be careful like god just leave this one okay but you can do this one okay so i made him too small in my eyes like there are some things i thought he couldn't do and then some things he could do that's exactly how some of these people um that's how it was basically so there were some things that they could not do since they could not do it they had to take it to the levites and then the levites were going to do it but in our generation we have god we have the right access to god so go to god and ask god that how am i supposed to do this thing how should i carry on with this situation this is what is going on right now go ask god about anything don't let anybody deceive you that some of those things are very petty you should not be asking god this kind of thing or that kind of thing mm -mm. you should be asking god those kind of things oh yeah and then it says, um, and thou shalt do according to the sentence, which day of that place, which the Lord shall choose, shall shew thee. And thou shalt observe to do according to all that they inform thee, according to the sentence of the Lord, which they shall teach thee. And according to the judgment, which they shall tell thee thou shalt do thou shalt not decline from the sentence which they shall show thee to the right hand nor to the left of course there are lots of times that it's not even a sentence but it's some activity some assignment that god has given us god has given us an assignment and we're turning around and around and around and doing every other nice thing apart from what god has said god is telling you that oh no go and meet this person and preach to the person Maybe it's a friend you had a fight with, you had a drag with, and God is saying, go and meet that friend. Apologize and reconcile with the friend. You're taking care of the less privileged. You're taking care of widows and orphans. You're taking care of this. You're going to preach. You're going for evangelism. You're See, eh? all those things that you're doing, eh? you the play and play. You go learn. Eh? Fly, 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 fly. You go learn. <laughs> it is not what you want to do that god wants it's what god wants you to do that you should be doing so until up until everything you're doing is counted for zero up until you go and apologize to that friend and make it right oh yes this is the exact same thing don't decline the instruction that you'll be given don't decline the judgment the sentence that they'll give you to do to those people you might say oh no the sentence is too light or oh no the sentence is too hard let's just deal with him by this way ah god says Saul, go and destroy amalek god will go and um um Saul will go and bring king agag bring a couple of sheep and all those things and then they'll come and tell him he will not be apologize and forgive mm -mm. he blames the people who blame help? And I'm an evil, we're blaming each other. Snake, blame, blame, blame. All man blame, that snake no get person to blame. Did they blame leave them in the Garden of Eden? Sha, sha, God could, could drive them out of the garden. See, uh, blame game has never helped anybody. No be today. It no start today, Sha. It started in the Garden of Eden. They blame, blame, blame. Did they remain in the garden? Mm -mm. God could, could drive them out. Stop blaming people. Stop blaming people. So blamed. What happened? The kingdom was taken away from him. Stop blaming people. Like David, the man after God's heart. Take responsibility for your actions. That was how David won God's heart. David never justified his actions. As they just mentioned, David, now you. Hey, Papa God. Yeah, picking don't do them again. I've done it again with a sum of ten thousand dollars. Father, help me, help me. Now me this.
I'm at your service. Papa God, deal with me as you have to. David was like that. He doesn't justify. He doesn't find a reason why. God has said, David, you don't make mistake. David knows say he don't make mistake. Pata, pata, he don't fail. Mm -mm. He will, um, I did it because, um, you know, it's because the... Because no day day. Because no day. When God gives you an instruction, do the instruction to the letter. Do the instruction to the letter. Yes, that's how it's supposed to be done. And it says, um, it says, do not look to the right or to the left. Not the ton ton. You still get to do that thing. If God has said you do it, that's the only thing that will work. There's nothing that you do that will change anything. Just do what God has told you quietly. And it says, and the man that would do presumptuously and would not hearken unto the priest that standeth to minister there before the Lord thy God or unto the judge, even that man shall die and thou shalt put away the evil from the land. See, it was strict though. In those days, you did die now, now. Like I seen when you start making all these mistakes, I'm sure the whole idea that God had was that if we don't deal with this one, if this one does it, we don't deal with this one, the next person will do it. If we don't deal with that person, the next person will do it. So when they set the example on the first person, the next persons were just. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And that's what happens to man. Human beings are like that. Sometimes it's only the, the ones that have gone bonkers that will not listen. But if you're in a place and they say, don't do this thing and you do it. And they set an example on the first person. Second person will go there. It won't happen. I say it's only the ones that they have screws, unscrewed screws in their heads who will go ahead and still do some things. If they do the, the given instruction, don't go here. The first person goes there and comes back and get a whooping, a terrible whooping. Me, why the fear whooping like this? I could not even look that way. As in, talk less of going there. I will not even look there. In fact, I will kill the thought in my head. <laughs> oh God, it is well with us. So it is well with us. So you presumptuously not do. So there are things that you presume. Don't presume. If you're not sure in your heart of hearts, go back and ask God again. God, what did you say I should do? Did you say I should go and make... um? friends do you say i should go and be best friends with this person or are you saying that i should just forget forgive them or are you saying that i should just apologize and that's it and learn my lesson what are you telling me to do i don't understand lord i don't really get it he would explain to you you think god will want you to do something and then not want you to give you the details as to how to do the thing and do it perfectly no that's not god the god i serve is not like that it's not a god of confusions anyway and it's when you're confused that you can presume, you can presumptuously do things. So ask him again. Ask him again. Ask him again. And it says that even in you presume, you know. So if you, if you didn't hear, better just ask than to presume, presume that, oh, this is what God was saying. I think this is what he said. If you're not sure, go back to him and ask. It's better that you take five years and hear God expressly clear in that five years you can do something that you should have done for five years in five days or or in ten days or in one day as opposed to someone who will be on the wrong track for those five years and still end up not getting it right no hurry you when it comes to things of God no hurry go to God and wait as long as it takes and hear God God only backs the one he sends. He no send you, you go, he no go back you. And when things start going bad for you, no say God, why? He wasn't there. He was not a part. You made a decision. And you were trying to force God's hand to endorse it. God has already made a plan. Before you were even formed in your mother's womb, God knew you. So come and ask him, where do you want me to be? 
I want to be in your way, Lord, so that I should fulfill purpose. I want to be in the place where you want me to be. I don't want to be where the world thinks I should be. I want to be where you, Lord, want me to be. It doesn't matter which place that is, but I want to be where you want me to be. Okay. And it says, um, and other people shall hear and fear and do no more presumptuously. And that's what I just said. When you set an example on the first person who makes that mistake, the next persons will never try it. <laughs> when thou art come unto the land, which the Lord thy God giveth thee and shall possess it and shall dwell therein and shall say, I'll set a king over me, like as all the nations that are about me, thou shalt in any wise set him king over thee, whom the Lord thy God shall choose. One from amongst thy brethren shall thou set king over thee. Thou mayest not set a stranger over thee, which is not thy brethren. Oh yeah. Sometimes leadership has to be people of in-house, people that you know, people that are amongst you. Don't just go and bring any kind of person and come and put them as leaders. Leaders. It's a different thing. But you can bring people to teach and in an area that you're not very good at and you don't have an understanding. You need to bring people to come and teach. But as a leader in your environment, in your vicinity, in your community, it cannot be a stranger. A stranger doesn't understand how you guys function. That's why I love a lot of churches who have their pre-Bible plan or Bible study or they have their training to teach you if you want to be a worker in the church they teach you their principles their values their standards what they stand for what they believe in if you're comfortable with it you can be a leader if you're not comfortable with it sorry darling you can't be a leader there because you'll be one of those persons that is going to bring trouble eventually you can't come to a place and the people don't believe in you then what can i give let me just give an easy example. The people don't use, believe in using cordless microphones and you're insisting. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm saying in the case of maybe there is something that they're not doing and they're not used to and they don't like it. And you're coming and insisting that they have to do it. No, 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 no. That will be bringing trouble. If you're not comfortable with the system that they have there, you have to leave. It's not them who have to change for you. You have to leave. If not, you bring problems. But if you went through their curriculum, if you went through their their um, rules and regulations, if you went through their terms and conditions, you'll know that, oh, this is how the function here, and you'll be able to queue in. It's left for you to make the choice. Will I be able to work with those people or not? Rather than starting to bring trouble now, you're trying to look for people in church and start explaining this left, right, front, back, and center. Yam, don, yam, no, don, koki, do so, koki, no, do so. Eh, eh. No, you, God will deal with you. It says, and it says, um, But ye shall not multiply horses to himself, nor cause the people to return to Egypt, to the end that they should multiply horses. For as much as the Lord had said unto you, ye shall henceforth return no more that way. You, you know? And maybe God has given them their own way that they should function. And then he has told them that, oh, they should not return this way. Maybe they came from a particular place that you had been before and you still are. And God has moved them from there and said, don't return to that place. Keep going forward. And then they're not going forward. You come back, you want to insist and put that thing that they've said they should not go back to. God treats with people differently for different reasons. That's the reason why somebody, you and somebody can do the exact same thing. God will let their person's own slide and not let your slide because you, the Bible says, who much is given to, much is required. I remember sometime when I was going through a kind of challenging relationship and, and the Holy Spirit said to me that, and I was saying that, but this person, I was saying in my heart, but this person is a pastor. This person is a prophet of God. He sure should even know the Bible more than me. How can he be saying this thing? And then Lord, you're like, you're just giving a deaf ear to it. The Lord said, it's your test, darling. If you failed it, you failed. Me and him will have our relationship. That didn't mean God was saying what he was doing was right. Rather, God was telling me that I should focus on me and my relationship with him. If my relationship with this guy is 
is is actually hurting my relationship between me and God, then it's not a relationship I should be in. It doesn't matter what God had said before. Was it not God who said that they should use Saul as king? That's what he said before. But he got to the time where he dis he he disconnected from Saul and chose and chose David. So yes, there is that possibility. Was it not God who said Abraham should go and sacrifice Isaac? It was still him who said, Don't sacrifice Isaac anymore, take the lamb. So please, there are times we need to be very clear, we need to be very very connected to god to know what he's telling us per time he has nothing to do with the other person sometimes we say oh he's my partner we're in a relationship when you're married okay good and fine and even at that there's still some things that you would have to do just by yourself see eh? i'm telling you people i'm saying it till date if it was me i'm sure <laughs> some people say they can imagine what was going through isaac's head when they were going back so my father my my father who gave birth to me they must have told isaac their story who gave birth to me after 25 years of waiting was going to go and put me at the altar and slaughter me hey papa you try mm? no but in my own the way i look at it is like from the story that he was told he too probably believed that his father knew what he was doing oh yeah he had probably grown and he was groomed and he was taught about how God functions and how God works. So I'm sure when his father explained it to him, he understood. Isaac was supposed to have been stronger than his father. So I don't think his father was just going to be binding his hands and binding his legs without a fight. But I'm sure Isaac understood that whatever his father is about to do, should be the right thing i mean let's let's be so sold out for god like that so when god wants to do some things with us when god wants to bind our hands and put us at the altar as a sacrifice when he wants to bind our feet we're not moving the bible says be a living epistle be uh, um present yourself your bodies as a living sacrifice my dad said the problem with sac living sacrifices is that when the fire comes we jump off the altar <laughs> that some of us were not dead to christ were fainted in christ and that's why when the fire comes to burn the sacrifice we jump off the altar dead people don't react to things that are happening in the world if you put fire on them they don't react if you put frozen water on them they don't react if you drag them on the floor they don't react if you do anything to them they don't react that's how we're supposed to be as children of god it's not that I was stupid. I know sometimes we we'll say, ah, I know my right. This person just thinks I'm stupid. This person just thinks I'm daft. You know, let God be the one to tell you that react like this. Let it not be that you're reacting because you think you know your rights. You know your rights. You know your rights. Did Jesus not know his rights? Did he not leave the people to spit on him? Did he not leave the people to say all kinds of nonsense about him? Shabby Jesus didn't know his rights. Or, I beg, oh, somebody should tell me. Jesus didn't know his rights, eh? <laughs> Jesus knew his rights, but there were some times that it was not just about his rights. It was about what God wanted. And what God wanted was not going to be him shoving off his rights, whether he knew his rights or not. It was going to be him going according to the will of God. And the will of God was that he should die on the cross. And he had to die. He had to die on the cross. He had to. So people of God, you get a CB, you get a CB. God wants us to be in the place where he wants us to be and do what he wants us to do. Okay, so let's go. Where are we at? What verse are we at? Okay, God doesn't want us to go back to the place where we were. God doesn't want us to go back to the world. He wants us to stay connected to him. And so we have to do all we have to do to stay connected. Neither shall he multiply wives to himself, that his heart turn not away. Neither shall he greatly multiply to himself silver and gold. And it shall be, when he seated upon the throne of his kingdom, that he shall write him a copy of this lore in a book, out of that which is before the priests, the Levites, and it shall be with him 
and he shall read therein all the days of his life, that he may learn to fear the Lord his God, to keep all the words of this law and these statutes to do them. It's not only about hearing God's word, it's about doing them. I've said it time without number. If we listen to all these beautiful messages and all these things we listen to and all that, and we don't put them to practice, it's as useless as we didn't even hear it in the first place. We and people who have not heard the word, we're not different, but our punishment will be worse because we know. I said, God said to me that it's your test. If you fail it, you failed it. It has nothing to do with him. God will have to use people to test you. God will have to use people to put you, to put your faith to work, to be sure that your faith is growing. It has to be people. He will not come on earth and come and um, try to teach you patience, try to teach you long suffering, try to teach you which other ones, all those fruits of the spirit. He will not come here to come and teach you. He will use people and things around you for you to learn that. And so it says that his heart be not lifted above his brethren, up above his brethren, that he turn not aside from the commandment to the right hand or to the left, to the end that he may prolong his days in his kingdom, he and his children in the midst of Israel. When we obey God's commandments, it brings long life. Some of us are not living life expectancy is so short is so bad why we don't obey god's word it is that simple bible says if we meditate in his word day and night he will bring us good success which means there is bad success and good success comes with the company of everything good health good life i mean good 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 it's just good it's just good but now, when we're not obeying God's commandments, we're getting ourselves into all kinds of troubles, all kinds of problems, all kinds of tough situations and complicated situations. And we're asking God, why, 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 why? And God is saying, be in the place where I want you to be. Be doing the things that I want you to do. You're not. What do you expect God to do? God can do anything when you're not in the place where he wants you to be. He can't do anything for you when you're not doing what he wants you to do. He can't back what he didn't send. He can't back who he didn't send. He can't back you on the mission that he didn't send you on. But a lot of us, instead of doing the one singular mission that God has sent us to do, we're doing every other thing. Oh, because my friend is doing it. Oh, because my brother is doing it. Oh, because my sister. Oh, because my father wants me to. Oh, because my mother wants me to. See, in the end, eh, we we'll know, like we we'll know in our hearts of hearts that eh, all these things that we're doing, we're deceiving ourselves. Nobody is involved. It's about us and God. It's God who created you and God who gave you a purpose. So it's about going back to God and asking for that purpose. It's about going back to God and asking him for what it takes to fulfill that purpose when he has told you. It's about going back to God. All of it is about going back to God. You have to go 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 back to God. There is no excuse whatsoever. You have to go back. To God so yes I don't know about you I don't know what you're going through I don't know what the issue is but at least sit down again and rethink what was the assignment God gave you had he given you an assignment before the truth is that if he had given you an assignment before and you've not taken on it he's not going to give you any next assignment so you might be waiting and complaining and getting angry and grumbling and saying God is not speaking to you anymore why is he silent why is he not talking to you he has given you a first step you've not taken that step you want him to give you the second no, he ain't going to bypass protocol like that for you this time. He's going to follow the normal procedure. It's going to be step one, then step two, then step three, then step four. And then when he sees how faithful you are, he can reach at step four. And then he will fly you to step seven because he chooses to, because he knows that you have been his daughter or his son who has been faithful from step one to step two to step three. And then now he gathers people and put them along the way that will carry you from step four to step seven. Carries you from step 5 to step 15. 
at his discretion but you have to trust him you have to start trusting him you have to start believing him that what he says he will do he will do when he sends his word his word will accomplish the purpose for which it is sent and then it will begin to work for you and then your days will be prolonged people yeah if you have enough time to rest enough time to relax you live longer if you have enough time to take care of yourself to 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 go on that vacation to love up on your loved ones to spend more time with them you know to live longer people you live longer stress actually reduces life expectancy mm -hmm. anxiety depression and all those things they actually reduce life expectancy so if we want to get our life expectancy back to the place where it was. Even the life expectancy that the Bible gave and was saying it's about 70. A lot of people barely get to reach it. But we're supposed to have been aging beautifully. But are we obeying God's commandments? This is several things we've read from the Bible that has shown us that obeying the word of God is paramount and is key to giving you long life. Obeying your father and your mother, obeying the laws and the precepts and the tenets of the Bible is also another way to grow. So I'm very grateful that God has been faithful and uh, he has kept us. He has made it possible for us to see this new day. I'm really, really grateful and I'm so, so happy. And I can't thank God enough. Um, yesterday I missed out on this. I was feeling somehow, I was feeling like my body wasn't just getting to it. it I couldn't just hold it back. I, I woke up, I looked at the chapter. I was asking myself, it's just a short chapter, what is going on? But and yes, you all think we just have it all figured out. We have it all going well for us. But sometimes, even us get overwhelmed. But God's grace and mercy is sufficient for us. And I know that a lot of people out there always praying for me because I just kind of re-energize re after a while. And uh, I'm grateful to God for all of you who always stand in, stand in the gap for me, who are always looking out for me and making sure that I get the best as well. And God uses me in a very, very big way. Thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. So, um, this is where we're wrapping up for today. Um, tomorrow is going to be Deuteronomy chapter 18. I hope that we can read it all together. We've gone past, um, half of the book of Deuteronomy today, because I think Deuteronomy actually has 34 verses. So we've gone past it. I think it was yes. No. Yeah. We've gone past half today. So 17 today is exactly half actually. So um, let's keep coming. Don't forget to share, like, subscribe, follow us on all our social media platforms. We're eventually going to put this on all social media platforms eventually. But for now, we're putting it only. We're putting it only here. But eventually, we're going to put it on all our social media platforms. So um, thank you, people. I'm so grateful. I'm really happy that um you all are here you're having a great time you're being a blessing as well and uh, you're supporting this course i always get to say i love you so so very much but god loves you way way more so lord we thank you for your word we pray that you'll be engrafted on the fleshy tables of our hearts so we're gonna leave thereby we're gonna be leaving epistles read of men and people are gonna see your good works in our lives and glorify your father who is in heaven people are gonna see how you're living your life through us and want to be like us, which is in essence wanting to be like you, Lord. We give our hearts all to you. We surrender to you totally and completely. We hold in nothing, praying that you speak through us and use us. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for hearing and answering. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Until tomorrow. Ciao, ciao. Mwah.